Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Pokemon Doubles Federation battle. I'm your host, Ryan, and today I'm going to give you a play-by-play -play for the Tennessee Sea Kings versus the Dungannon Typhlosions. This is Season 1, Round 3, and let us begin. So Liquid Ice, owner of the Tennessee Sea Kings, decided to bring Aerodactyl, Hippowdon, Delphox, Melodic, Muck, and Jolteon. In countering, the Dungannon Typhlosions, owner being SKO66, decided to bring Machamp, Lopunny, Zoroark, Sylveon, Ninetales, and Typhlosion. Now, Zoroark is going to be a tricky bastard because how is the Sea Kings going to know without attacking? Unfortunately for the Sea Kings, this Zoroark's team does not have anything that Psychic is weak to. Well, I guess there is the Machamp. Um, so, there is somewhat of, of a play there, and we'll have to see if Eskio and the Typhlosions are going to be able to correctly use Zoroark to throw off his opponent. So starting off for the Sea Kings, we've got Aerodactyl and Jolteon, and in response, the Typhlosions have brought out Machamp and Sylveon. Now, of course, one of those two, Sylveon or Machamp, can be Zoroark, and there's no way to know until it gets attacked. Now, we are gonna see a Mega Evolution off on the Aerodactyl to gain that powerful Tough Claws and probably try and take out the Machamp. Actually, instead, we see a Thunderbolt off on the Jolteon, doing more than half, and revealing the Zoroark. Now, Aerodactyl Sky drops the Sylveon, believe it or not, most likely to take it out of using its powerful Hyper Voice. So the Sky Drop's gonna come in, it's probably not gonna KO the Sylveon, no it's not, but it's gonna do more than half. And the Jolteon is gonna go for that nice and powerful Volt Switch, taking out the Zoroark and giving the Sea Kings a chance to switch in to take to, to bring in something that can take a Hyper Voice, that being Delphox or Muck. So we're gonna actually see Delphox come in, and the Hyper Voice does end up going off. Now it does more than half to that Aerodactyl, but it does about a third to the Delphox, so it can definitely take another one. Now Lopunny is gonna come in for the Typhlosions, and as everyone may know, Lopunny is very common with Fake Out. So, are we going to see a fake out onto the Aerodactyl and a Hyper Voice to finish them off? I don't know! But it doesn't look like that will happen because the Sea Kings are preemptively expecting the fake out and double protecting for both Mons. Now, the fake out does come off. It does actually go off onto the Delphox, which was kind of a risky play if the Aerodactyl did not protect. Now we're going to see a Sky Drop go off onto the Lopunny, and that's pretty much a gone Lopunny next turn. And a Mystical Fire going off on Sylveon. Now if I'm correct, that is a guarantee special attack drop, so that's probably a good strategy for the Sylveon. Now, without doing that, that Shadow Ball most likely will kill, and it doesn't, and he survives because of the Mystical Fire. Now down comes the Lopunny, and there it goes. It's a one-shot KO, one-hit KO, and it is gone. Now, what will happen to the Sylveon? We're going to see a Dazzling Gleam. Now, we know that this is Life or Boosted, and it's enough to take out the Sylveon. So, it was a really good position for the Sea Kings right now, uh, mainly because they haven't lost anything yet. So, in comes the Machamp, and we know this is the real Machamp because the Zoroark is officially gone. So, out goes the Delphox in, attempt, in, a, in, in an attempt to... To preserve that 4 0, we can see a Hippowdon come in and a Protect happen off onto the Aerodactyl. Now, Aerodactyl, really, all he, ne all he needs to do is go for a straight, good old fashioned Sky Drop, and that should be more than enough to scare this Machamp away. So, that's what he's gonna do. He's gonna go for that nice and powerful Sky Drop, leaving the Hippowdon basically to do nothing. He's gonna slack off, but how much HP is he really going to get back? Not that much because he's pretty much at full already. But that should be game because I don't think Machamp wants to take this Sky Drop. And we'll see. And indeed it is true! The Aerodactyl is too strong for the Machamp and the Machamp goes down. So a delay in turn for that battle. But the first game goes to the type the goes to the sea kings my bad so moving on the typhlosions are really gonna have to win this next battle in order to even make a chance to win the set so you know that being said it's gonna be very interesting to see how the typhlosions decide to come in aerodactyl is really strong and a lot of his team a lot of the typhlosions cannot handle the aerodactyl mainly because it's just basically 
it takes out a Pokemon for one turn and then does more than half damage to it. So that's a that's an issue for the Typhlosion. We'll see how he handles that. So uh, the Sea Kings are going to start off with their same old tried and true method of Jolteon Aerodactyl, but Eskio is going to start off with Sylveon and Lopunny again. Still, maybe bluffing that Zoroark. We have no idea. But both sides are going to Mega Evolve their respective Megas. And I would wager we might see a fake out onto one of the two, either Jolteon or Aerodactyl. Now, the Jolteon is going to go for that Protect, that nice and powerful Protect, as well as the Aerodactyl. Not only is this going to stop the fake out from happening, but it's also going to scout out to see what the Sylveon wants to do. And of course, the Sylveon's just going to be spamming Hyper Voice. I mean, it's its strongest move. There's no reason for it to not. Now, Aerodactyl's just going to take this Jolt, this, uh, <laughs> sorry, not Jolteon, this Low Punny out of the field in order for, you know, basically a KO next turn. Jolteon is going to go for the Thunderbolt onto the Sylveon. It's not going to do a lot of damage, but, but, it does get a pa paralysis. And in return for that that unfortunate bit of hacks the Jol the sylveon actually KOs the jolteon with a hyper voice crit uh so it's a bit of a fair trade there now the lopani does come down from the sky and it does get one hit KO'd no no surprises there uh now delphox is going to show another showing of that mystical fire it's going to do a little bit more damage than last game and it of course is going to drop that special attack now, we're going to see another Hyper Voice come off on the Sylveon. This should not kill either of the two. In fact, it's not even going to drop either of them below half. That special attack drop was 100% needed. Now, in comes the Machamp. Again, it could be the Zoroark. We don't know. We don't even know if he brought the Zoroark. But we're going to see a Protect come off. And unfortunately, a Night Daze. So not only is this going to kill the Delphox, but it's going to completely reveal that being the Zoroark. Even if it doesn't change forms. We all know Machamp cannot get Night Days. But hey, Delphox went down, so it was a good trade for the Typhlosions. Now in comes Hippowdon, and Hippowdon, honestly, probably won't be able to do very much in this situation. But it can eat up a lot of hits. Now, now you may be wondering, this guy, he's bringing two Machamps on the field. What's going to happen with that? But unfortunately for... Um, the Typhlosions, he's just going to actually take out the Zoroark, who is arguably was the strongest on the field at that point, because the Sylveon was at negative one. Now the Sky Drop's going to come in, and obviously this isn't super effective. It's not going to KO, but it's going to do a significant amount of damage. Now Zoroark is free from, the, from, from Sky Drop, but it's going to miss its Night Days. In the end, it didn't matter because fortunately for the Typhlosion's dynamic punch was enough to KO. Now the Hippowdon is going to try and put that Machamp to sleep because unfortunately for the Zoroark, Hippowdon just has to protect and he goes down uh, to the sand. But thinking ahead, the Typhlosion's actually switch out Zoroark for Sylveon in order to avoid that KO. And we're going to see a knockoff happen onto the Hippowdon. Now, unfortunately for the Typhlosions, all that damage is going to be reversed because he will be slacking off. Healing it all the way back. And unfortunately for the Typhlosions again, Machamp's actually going to probably fall asleep here. And there's an even other problem. Sylveon's actually at pretty much infinite negative speed. Gonna not be outsped, going to be outsped by the Hippowdon and most likely going to go down to an Earthquake, and it does. So this is actually kind of a problem, because now he's the sleeping Machamp with the Citrus Berry, and a very low Zoroark. So if this Hippowdon does have Protect, it might spell Doom for the Typhlosions. But if he doesn't, the Typhlosions basically win. And unfortunately for the Sea Kings, he does not have Protect. And that Grass Knot's going to be enough to take out the Hippowdon because it is a heavy Pokemon. And that's going to be game two to the Typhlosions. So, at this point in time, we've had two battles. And both of them have gone to each party. So that leaves us with one game left. So with this one game, it will decide the victor, and up until this point, the Tennessee Sea Kings have won every single one of their sets. So for 
the Typhlosions, who have only won one so far, they really want to win this. They want to have that better record than the Sea Kings. They want to make sure that they can get this ahead. So we're going to see how Eskio commands his team and if he can command it to victory. Because otherwise, it's looking pretty good for the Sea Kings. Now, the Sea Kings are going to start off with their same old, same old. It's worked in the past. It's worked for the past two battles. Jolteon and Aerodactyl is good for them. Typhlosions, on the other hand, are actually going to start off with Typhlosion this time instead of the Sylveon or the Machamp. And going to continue on with the low punning theme. Now, we're wondering, is he going to fall for the same fake out trick? They both always protect. They both always never get faked out. So Aerodactyl does, of course, protect once again. But actually, the Jolteon takes a bit of a risk, not no, excuse me, not knowing if the fake out would happen there. Gets a crit on what was the Typhlosion, but actually the Zoroark. And uh, the Volt Switch actually just switches out and brings in Hippowdon. Now this is. This is a very lucky play for the Sea Kings. Because not only did they get a crit to reveal the Zoroark, but it was put in a range where sand will kill it. So switching in brings up the sand. Now, unfortunately for the Sea Kings, the Hax was rebounded a bit, and the Hippadon has now been burned. Hippadon really won't be able to do very much other than take attacks now, but hey, I think that's mostly what he was on the team for. So we'll have to see. I can only assume that the Aerodactyl is going to sky drop the low punny next turn, get it out of the way, and then we'll most likely see a switch out for them from the Hippowdon. Uh, Solar Beam coming off the Ninetales is very obvious at this point, and I believe the Sea Kings believe so as well. So in comes the Delphox, the one thing that can take a Solar Beam incredibly well. Now, the sky drop does go off. Low Pony is basically guaranteed to be KO'd next turn. Instead of the Solar Beam, we see an Overheat, which is arguably a better option and most likely would have killed the Hippadon regardless. And it does a sizable chunk to the Delphox. The Sun boosted power is going to be very, very crucial. However, at the trade of that, Ninetales is now at negative two special attack. Can't really do very much. Um, but we're going to see a Psychic come off. It's gonna probably do a decent amount, and it does. It ends up doing more than half after two hit KO there. But since it's not enough to KO and the Aerodactyl is not enough, wasn't able to attack this turn, uh, Aerodactyl is gonna get burned. And that's actually a problem for the Sea Kings. Because if you look at his team outside of the Jolteon, uh, Aerodactyl is probably the strongest on this team. So putting him in a position where the Aerodactyl is now burned is actually quite a negative thing for the Sea Kings. Now we're going to see the Ninetales and the Typhlosion lead again. Or not not again, but we're going to see the combination. Um, fortunately for the Typhlosions, the Rock Slide misses the Ninetales. And even burned, it might still have done quite a lot of damage. But, fortunately, it misses. So we're going to see a Power Swap come off on the Ninetales, which was kind of an interesting choice. Um, because it switched all changes I guess I guess that's all it did was just get rid of that negative two uh, special attack drop from the overheat but I'm pretty sure it doesn't revert the burn damage or the, the burn debuff um, so I think overall that was a pretty solid turn for the Typhlosions now, unfortunately he can't switch out and re-up the Sun and even burnt this uh, rock slides actually gonna take them both out even burned uh, not not a crit to be seen in that on that turn. So unfortunately for the Typhlosions um, They end up losing the third match. So the whole set goes to the Tennessee Sea Kings and currently as of round three They are undefeated. They are completely undefeated. I mean they've lost You know one one match in, the, in each in most of their battles but their sets are completely undefeated, so they are definitely the top of the group for this season so far. I'm Ryan again. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys at the next episode. Peace.